In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to sync animations with audio. Now, we've already learned how to create basic slides and add some content. And in this tutorial, we're going to focus on synchronizing animated content with recorded audio narration. Now, let's take a look at the slide we're going to build. I'm going to replay the slide from the beginning so you can hear it. Effective managers delegate wisely, they set clear goals, and they recognize achievements. So it's just a simple slide with three animated bullet points that synchronize with an audio track. All right, let's go ahead and build this interaction. Close the preview. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, if you're following along with the practice files, you'll have a, a slide already set up for you called practice, and it just has uh, the character on the background as well as the, uh, the background image. You're welcome to start with that one, or if you prefer, you can just start with a, with a new slide by going up to slides, basic layouts, and then choosing blank. Whichever you want to do works fine. Just wanted to get the slide started so you could focus on, on setting up the animations. So the first thing we do is we'll just add a, uh, some title text here on the slide. We do that by going up to insert text box and then just click once on the slide to set the text. And this will be our heading. So we'll just type in effective managers. And obviously that's a little bit small. First thing I want to do is just verify that I'm working with the theme fonts and the heading and I am, that's fine. Make this bold. And let's just choose a lighter color. And we'll dial this up to around 26. Just move it over there, that's fine. That's just gonna be the title for the, uh, the slide. We're gonna animate the actual bullet points below it, but we need a title, right? Now we'll just add the bullet point text and it's really the same process. We go up to insert text box and just drag a text box on the slide. So the first bullet will be delegate wisely. The next one is set clear goals, and finally recognize achievement. Now again, this is not so easy to read because it's a dark color. So I can just come back up to the font color and then choose the same color we just used. And I'm going to go ahead and make this just a little bit larger. 18 is probably fine. And we just need to add some bullet points, and we do that by going up to the paragraph options. And we have the bullets right here. And if I wanted to choose some custom ones, I could also do that from uh, the drop-down menu, but I'm just going to stick with the with the default ones for this tutorial. Now, if the bullets seem a little tight here for the line spacing, we can adjust that by just going up to the paragraph settings and choosing line spacing options. So maybe 1.5 is going to work a little better here, just adds a little bit more uh, space for, between them and, and makes it a little bit easier to read. All right, so at this point we have a title and we have some bullets on the slide. Probably a good idea to take just a moment and rename the timeline objects just so we can quickly identify them. So for the title, I'm just going to call this text heading. And for the bullets, let's just call it bullets. So when you look at the bullets right now, you can see that it's really in the timeline, it's just one item, it's one text box, and that's how it's being treated by default. Now to animate them, we have a couple options. So if we go up to the animations tab, and let's just say we want to fade these in. So we'll just choose an entrance animation to fade. Everything still looks the same. You see a little star icon right here indicating that this is an entrance animation, but we still are really seeing everything as a single text box. So let's just preview our slide real quick to take a look at what, the, uh, what's, what we have. Everything just animates in together. Let me replay that real quick. You see everything just fades in all at once. And we knew that was going to happen because it's still being treated as a single text box. Now we can change that by going to the effect options and you see down here at the bottom is the option for by paragraph. So by default, Storyline is going to animate text boxes with multiple lines or bullets as a single object. But if you want to separate each of those lines and make those their own um, animation, their own object, just choose by paragraph. And while it doesn't look too different here on the slide, take a look down here in the timeline. See this little arrow just appeared. And what happened was Storyline now grouped these as individual text boxes or text lines. And so from here, we're able to stagger these out and adjust the timing. Let's preview our slide one more time. And so when the slide loads, we now have each line, each bullet, fading in as its own animation. OK, so that's exactly what we wanted. Let's go ahead and close the preview. OK, so now let's bring in some audio so we can begin syncing these objects with the audio narration. Now, if you have your own audio, you're welcome to use it. Or if you're following along, you can find the audio in your assets folder. So I'm going to bring that audio in. I'm going to go to insert 
audio and then audio from file. And in the audio folder, I have the effective manager's audio clip. Go ahead and select it and then click open. And by default, Storyline is going to put the audio here on the top layer in the timeline. A lot of developers like working with the timeline on the bottom. Doesn't really matter where you put it. Um, you just have the audio here and you can, you can move it up everywhere, anywhere, everywhere you want. The other thing to notice is that the timeline was expanded from the default five seconds to 10 seconds. And that's because my initial timeline was shorter than the duration of the audio. So the audio pushed out my timeline to 10 seconds, which is the, the duration of the audio clip. Now we can almost tell where those bullet points are just by looking at the audio, right? You sort of see the waveform down here and then you see a flat line, another waveform and a flat line. That's gonna visually give us an idea of where we want to set each of the bullet points. We don't wanna rely on our eyes to judge where the audio is. We're gonna to wanna to listen to it. Let's go ahead and listen to the narration. Now, before I click the play button down here to play the audio, I wanna tell you about cue points. Now, cue points are just visual markers that we can insert on the timeline. So at this point, I'm just gonna click somewhere on the timeline and press the C key on my keyboard, and that automatically inserts a cue point. And it has really no effect on the output of your file, but it does give you a visual marker to indicate certain points along the timeline. So what we wanna do is, I'm gonna delete this one right here. We wanna play the timeline, start at the beginning, Right, and then we're going to play the audio, and as we hear each of these these uh, bullets come in, delegate wisely, set clear ex ex goals, and recognize achievement, I want to press C on the keyboard to set a cue point on my timeline. Now I can pretty much guess where this is going to go just based on this audio, but again, when you're working with longer files or you're working with audio that may have a background track or just may not be as clearly recorded, you're going to want to take advantage of cue points to help you synchronize. So I'm just going to come down here and press play. It just takes a moment to load it up, set clear goals, recognize. Okay, so I think I got these pretty close. I'm gonna move this audio up to the top just so we can compare it. So it looks like I came in a little bit late on this first one, and it just depends on how, how accurate you want it to be, right? But you have the option to move these around a little bit just to uh, position them in place. Like some, sometimes folks wanna have the, the animation start before the audio actually plays, well, maybe another style would be to have maybe the first half second or second of the audio play and then have the term or the, the, the bullet fade in. Fully up to you and how that works. I'm gonna move that back down. And so we already added, right, the animation to each of our bullets. And now that we have the cue points up here, it's just a matter of dragging these items around, along the timeline to set where and when they come in to the slide. So delegate wisely is the first one. It's gonna align with the first cue point. Set clear goals is my second one. So I'm just going to drag that over here to the second cue point. And then the final a third bullet, I'm just going to drag that over here. And that's how easy the cue points make synchronizing animations on the timeline, right? We couldn't have done this if we hadn't changed the animation style, the options for uh, bringing these all in as a paragraph, right? If they're all coming in as a single object, this wouldn't be possible. But when we use the paragraph option, then we actually break all these out into their own line item on the timeline so then we can treat them as individual objects. And the benefit is from a development point, we still have one text box, right? We don't have to put three separate text boxes in here and then align, the, align them, distribute their heights, and then animate them. We can still just work from a single text box and Storyline will treat these as individual objects. Now, one more thing I wanna point out is this is a really short audio clip, right? It's only 10 seconds. But if this audio clip had been, you know, a minute long and I have you know, audio throughout the timeline, it's, it's wider than my actual monitor can process, and so I'm always scrolling back and forth. One thing that makes this really easy is I'm just gonna reset these objects here. So if I have cue points that are beyond the, the, uh, the view of my current timeline, I can just right click each one of those uh, objects, and I can choose align to cue point. And by doing that, it's going to snap this object starting point all the way along the timeline. So in this case, it's really simple, right? We just Timeline's only 10 seconds, but if I had something over here on like say 45, 50 seconds, and I don't want to keep scrolling over each time, I can just right click each of these objects and then uh, snap it over to the cue point and it perfectly aligns with it. But just another tip for synchronizing objects with narration when you have a lot longer, when you're working with longer timelines. So those are pretty much the basics of syncing animations to your audio in Storyline 360. Any objects that you add to the screen can be moved along the timeline 
to create entrance and exit points. And those animations are inserted from the animation ribbon. He also learned how to use the timeline to control the appearance of the objects on the screen and then sync animations using cue points. Now it's up to you to practice animating and synchronizing content in your own e-learning courses.